Hello and welcome. This is another opportunity to do life. And wherever you are in the world, I want you to know how special and how welcome you are to this live streaming. I want to take a moment to thank God for watching over us all through this month. And I'm looking forward for a greater month ahead. Let me just say to you, by way of prayer, may the Lord sustain you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord show you his mercy and grace. And may you be enveloped, covered by his blood. May the blood of Christ preserve you from sickness and disease. And may the Lord shield you from this COVID-19 and its effects. I pray for your family. I pray for your household. I pray for the things concerning you. That the Lord will continue to lift up your head and give you victory in your going out and your coming in. I pray that the Lord would cause you to smile and the Lord will cause you to rejoice over his works as you see your life going up and seeing God putting you in the right place. I pray that the Lord will deliver you from sadness, depression, loneliness, and any sense of failure. I declare you are not a failure for the Lord God who loves you and who consider you his own will show you his mighty grace. I bless you today as we prepare to do life together in the precious name of Jesus. Again, welcome to Do Life, and welcome to Life International, and to all of our loved ones, friends, members, associates, affiliates, and partners. What a joy, allowing me to come into your home to share this great message on vision with you. Today I want to address a topic called what vision can do. What your vision can do. I want to personalize it, what your vision can do. For the past weeks I've been dealing with vision and I believe it is necessary because at the beginning of the year we have to actually put things in perspective and look at how we're going to take each day at a time and also project what we want to see happen in our lives. Yes, ultimately, God is in control of our lives, but he wants us to plan. Because if you plan, God will bless it. But if you don't plan, then you don't give God anything to bless. You have to understand that this month, the whole dedication, the message is to helping you to know that you can stand strong and you can achieve whatever you are meant to achieve in life. What vision can do for you is the message. I also want to take a moment that at the end of the teaching, we will show you again part of the vision of Life International. We have been talking about the Global Leadership Center, and it is almost here. Very soon, sooner than you think, we shall inaugurate and actually come together and celebrate in the Global Leadership Center. It is meant to benefit you it is meant to strengthen you and also meant to give you the necessary tools that you need so that you will do the things you are called to do and ordained to do. We have dedicated ourselves to supporting you achieve your life's goal, your mission, and also your purpose in life. We identify with you in spite of where you're coming from. We believe that we can help you. We also believe that we can support you and also have the confidence that if you allow us the privilege of mentoring you or ministering to you on a regular basis, we can help bring godly values to you that will help you attain your life's dream and vision. So take Life International as part of your family. Consider Global Leadership Center and take advantage of all that we are offering right here. We know that your purpose in life will be enhanced. And Life International will fulfill its mission by partnering with you and helping you to do the best you can for your life, your family, and also your loved ones, and ultimately to the world. We're talking about what your vision can do. Let me give you some basic points because I'm not going to go too long today. I just want to just give you some points, and I hope 
that these points will mean much to you. One, vision has the power to change your mindset. If you have a vision and you allow yourself to be influenced by the vision, then your mindset will be different. You know, what we think is different. And mindset is usually permanent. Thoughts go through our head all the time. But a mindset becomes what we call a lifestyle. When a person comes up with a mindset, it means this is how they operate. The uh, uh, mode of operanda, they operate within this mindset. And we all have mindset. When you have a clear vision and you allow the vision to influence you, you discover that your mindset would be different. Number two, vision has a way of giving you a different perspective. When a person that is moved by a vision or a person that walks by a vision, the person's perspective is different. Different, 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 different. You may have people come to you with all kinds of discouragements, but it never affects you because your perspective is different. You see things differently. Just as I said last week, I talked about Moses sending the people of Israel, 12 leaders, to go spy. You see, 10 of them came with a negative report, and two saw things differently because they had a vision. Their perspective was different. They saw that the the, uh, uh, Anakites, the the, uh, uh, Hebusites, and all the giants in the land were no match for them because when you have a vision, you see obstacle as opportunity to conquer. That's what vision does. So if you have a vision, you would first and foremost have a different mindset. Number two, the vision will give you a different perspective. And also, if you have a vision, you should always be certain that vision has a way of bringing creativity you never knew all the time was hidden in you. Vision has a way of bringing creativity that you never knew was hidden in you. When a person has a vision, they are able to do things, they are able to think differently, and they are able to create things that they didn't know was there. There are times that you surprise yourself. You do things and people ask you, hey, man, how did you do this? And you say to yourself, I'm even surprised I was able to do it. You didn't know that you could create things until vision comes about. You know, there are some people who come up with visions and, uh, and you wonder, where is this coming from? One thing that I've always said is that, you know, when you buy a present and you want to give somebody a present, usually you have to buy a wrapper. You buy a gift and you, buy, you have a wrapper. And you have this wrap, nice wrappers, and you wrap this gift. You pay for this wrap. And you give somebody the gift or give the present to the person you so desire to have. The first thing they do is they hold the thing and they thank you. Oh, thank you. And right then, before you, they'll rip it. So I ask the question, who came up, whoever came up with the idea, whoever had this vision to create nice patterns, nice colors, I mean, beautiful, I mean, and invest millions of dollars in them so that you would just buy it and tear it. Bows, you, I mean, you, you see these bows, these nice bows, and they'll make them and specially made for a present. Somebody had a creative idea. They had a creative idea, and their vision is to create something just for you to destroy. And they make money for you to destroy what you've created. What a great idea! What a great idea! What a great idea! Somebody has just invested millions of dollars and made paper towel. Just to use it anyhow you want. And just throw it away. What a great idea. Vision has a way of bringing creativity out of you you didn't know was there. There are so many people who are doing things that they didn't know they could do. You know, I have watched with such amazement people that you and I would consider Handicap. They are not disadvantaged. The fact that they are handicapped doesn't mean they're disadvantaged. I have seen people who were born without arms, but they can do things that will shock you and things that you couldn't do. They can cook, they can birth children, they can drive, they can do anything and everything that you and I struggle to do. 
And I'm amazed how flexible they could use the legs, how flexible they could use the toes. I mean, how flexible they could open doors, they could do almost anything. And the thing they want you to know is that don't look down upon them and don't consider them to be people who can do things for themselves. They are usually independent because the fact that they were born without arms doesn't mean that they don't have vision and doesn't mean that they are not creative. We have creativity in us and vision has a way of bringing this creativity out of you. So I'm encouraging you, you've got to understand that if you have a vision, you can do things you didn't know was possible. Vision will make you do things you've never done before. Vision is amazing. When you have a vision, you have something to wake up to every morning. When you get up in the morning, you're excited because your vision drives you. When you go to bed, you think about what you're going to do the next day. When you dream, often you dream about the vision because it's something that is actually feeling you. It gives you much joy and happiness. When you have a vision, you think differently. When you have a vision, you reason differently. And when you have a vision, you process things differently. May, let me say it again. When you have a vision, you think differently. You reason differently. And you process things differently. Do you realize that the vision that is in you, that idea, the thoughts that you have, Often is the very thing that can do great things for you and many people around you. The reason why many of us are not inventors is because we don't allow our vision to go deeper than what it is. Some people have great ideas and they tell you I have these ideas. I've always been thinking about these ideas, but they'll never implement it. But when you have a vision that consumes you, you think different, you reason different, and you process things differently. Now, there are people who may look at you and say, listen, you are 75 years old, but you act like you're 25. And acting like 25 doesn't mean you don't have wisdom. It means you are operating on the energy level of a 25-year-old. And there are some people who are just 16, 17 years old but they operate like they are 79 because they think out of the box. Because they create new boxes. They are visionaries. You can't box them. You can't stop them. You can't hinder them. They are constantly, constantly thinking different. Constantly I mean, reasoning different. They reason different. They're constantly processing things differently. Whatever information that comes to them, they use it differently. You've got to understand that vision can do things for you you did not know could be possible. What your vision can do for you. Take it serious and don't play with it. Don't play with your vision. You've got to be a visionary if you can. But at least start with a vision. Have a mental picture of what is possible even though it's not materialized. Have a mental picture of the future even though you are yet to get there. Think like a visionary. Think as a person who knows what he or she is about. Think as a person who is convinced that the things that goes through, the things that takes, uh, the things that keep you up at night is not just waste of time, but it's there to make you become all you are intended to be. If you want to know your purpose, your destiny, your value, your principles in life, you've got to have a strong vision. And when you have a vision, that vision will do things for you you do not know could do. Vision will put food on your table. Vision will give you a life partner. Vision will bring you to the right association. Vision will get you into the right church. Vision will get you to do the right job. Vision will put you in strategic places that I tell you will surprise even you. Vision can do things for you. There are people, before they get employed, they have to visit their resumes to make sure that the place that they are sending their resume would look at their resume kindly. That is why people keep, keep updating their resume because the resume that you sent to uh, uh, job one is not the same resume you have to send to job two. Different jobs require different things. 
So you have to find out what will make this, what will make my application receive favorable outcome. So you add certain things to your resume, but if you have the same resume, I mean, I'll tell you, you don't update it. You don't reason, look over it. I mean, it become an old resume. Listen, today you cannot put on a resume that um, uh, you do what uh, 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 you do. I mean, uh, um, no, in the past we use typewriters that I know how to type 50 words per second. You can't get a job with that. With that, today nobody will ask you how many how many words can you type in a minute. It's done and gone. Years ago, we don't use cell phones. We use big phones. Those big phones today, they are antique. It doesn't go far. The one who came up with the idea that we have to improve on telephone. You can not carry telephone all along. We have to make it into a single unit, small part. Keep it in your pocket. In fact, you can do anything and everything on it. Came up with an idea. This is a vision. The person thought differently. They reasoned differently. And they processed things differently. That is what vision does. When you have a clear vision, and I mean you have a clear vision, things pops up when it gets closer to your vision. When people talk about your vision, you light up. Have you engaged with a conversation and you get so sleepy, tired? But the moment they start hitting some uh, strategic, using strategic words or terms, which borderline on your vision, you come alive. You come alive. It's like, hey, I come alive. Why? Because what they are saying resonates with you. It's stirring something in you. Somehow you are realizing that, hey, this person is speaking my language. Vision is like a tribe, you know. What tribe do you belong to? And whatever tribe you have, you have to speak the language of the tribe. Vision speaks its own language. If you have a vision, you speak the language of the vision. That's why your vision has to be what? Clear. There are so many characters, many individuals, many people who've had vision. Now, there are some people who will make money at all times, I mean, at all costs. You just send them, I mean, send them in the desert. They'll create oasis. Send them in a place where there's nothing. They'll find something to do. There are some people who can sit still. They're always looking for things to do. Because their mind says to be idle means failure. To be active means progressive. So they, they are constantly thinking differently, reasoning differently, and processing things differently. There are some people who sit in one spot. They will not move. They don't do anything. And they're okay. They're satisfied. There are some who are always constantly improving because vision is making them improve. I mean, they have a vision to be this. So they start small. They persist. They fail. They say, no, this is not a failure. This is not a failure. They keep pressing. They keep pressing. I mean, they may lose some here, lose some there, but they don't quit because losing doesn't mean they are failures. I may lose some, but win some because that's the name of the game. But the vision is that I will still one day receive a trophy. That's what it's all about. We all have vision. If you serve God, you have a vision. Your vision is that you're going to live for God the best you know how in this life. And when you are done in this life, you receive a crown. That is a vision. The ultimate goal. I have a picture of what life will be like at the end of the day. I have a picture, an idea. I mean, it just may be my idea, but at least I have it. And this vision can cause me to do things that I didn't think I could do. That's what vision does, you see. There are many, 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 many individual stories that we've heard. There are so many people that we know. And it could even be you who have been able to do things with your vision. Keep doing it. Because if you keep persisting, keep following the vision, you find out that that vision will open doors for you, supernatural doors. Follow your vision. Have you heard the word, the statement, follow your dream? What is your dream? What is your vision? Follow the vision. Find the right people, the right environment. Who can prepare you? Who can equip you? Who can train you? Follow the vision. Follow it. 
Vision is such that no matter how long it takes, wait for it. The vision will come to pass. It will tarry, but it will surely come to pass. Your vision may delay 10 years. That's okay. Do you know how many people can tell you, I started this idea many years ago when I was in high school. I tried it many times. The doors were shut. But somehow, I lost my job. Somehow, during the uh, uh, um, COVID-19 crisis, I lost my job. And I found myself doing this. And somehow, I felt like, you know what? I can do this. There are some people who can leave well-paying jobs, high positions, prestigious privileges, and do things that you may stand and say, why do you do this? But they have found that vision. Many times we follow visions. Remember, it doesn't take you always from the lower up, but at times it can take you from up down. You may be up in some areas, but when you find your right vision, you find the right connection, you find the right thing that you're supposed to do, you would do things you didn't know was possible. I see people who wanted to just, uh, I mean, they, they, CEOs who decided, you know what? I just uh, got uh, the problem. What was the problem? I, I, mean, I realized that I was gaining weight and my doctor told me that, hey, change your eating habits. And I was, I, I was drinking so many, this thing. And they told me, change your this thing. And when I changed my eating habit, instead of eating fast food, I started cooking. And I love it so much that my friends came and sampled what I was doing. And I realized that I just love it. I would just go and get books and study about various cuisines and study about different resum- uh, and all of, recipes. And all of a sudden, I realized that my friends were enjoying my meal. But you know what? Something came to me. Why don't you just start a restaurant? I didn't have the means. But somebody said to me, listen, have you considered starting a restaurant I said, no. He said, listen, you started, I invite employees to come buy from you. So I did it. And now look, I've ended up with what? Chain restaurants. You start small. You may leave a good position. You may be a CEO of a computer, of, of a technology firm, but still end up doing shoe shine. Why? Because you find your vision. When you find your vision, you will do things you didn't know you could do. What vision can do? is greater than what you could do for yourself. So that's why vision is good. You don't go wrong having a vision. At least, at least you can say, I have a reason to live. I have a reason to exist. Because this vision keeps me up every day. It gives me a purpose for living. Vision can do things for you. Now, there was a man who had a vision by name Paul. But his name before was Saul. His vision was to cause trouble among believers. He was a well-educated man, well-learned man. He sat on some of the best of his days, philosopher. He came from the right tribe or the right uh, uh, group or the right families. Came from the right society. Had a name. Zealous, wonderful, determined man whose vision was to make sure that anyone who called upon the name of Jesus is punished. Let's throw him in prison. He hated the name with passion. And that was his vision. He held on to the vision until a better vision came. You see, when a better vision comes, you give up the one that you're holding on to. Because better vision is better than just a vision. So here, Paul saw at the time pursuing the Christians, making sure that they're put in prison, punished. And let me share with you an experience he had. He was on his way to get the Christians where he wanted them. And this experience, I want to read it to you. I want us to read, speaks of itself. Acts chapter 9. Let's read verse 9 through 12. Acts chapter 9. I'll read uh, um, 9 through 12, then I'll jump to 15, to 23, 22. This is what it says. Now he was three days without sight. Now, whilst he was going, the experience was that uh, uh, the Lord confronted him. He was knocked off his horse or knocked off 
his chariot, whatever you may call it. And he heard these words. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm this Jesus. And immediately he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? But let's go further. Listen to this. He was blind for three days. He says, and he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drink, nor drunk, excuse me. Verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Now this man Ananias, God revealed to him in a vision. He had a vision. God revealed to him in a vision, not in the night when he was asleep, but right daylight. He had a vision, and this is what he heard in a vision. When the Lord called upon him, he said, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. This is a man who was hurting the church. This is a man who knew nothing about God's love. And if he knew, it was religious side, but had no experience with grace and mercy. He knew not Christ, but he knew the laws of God. And he disputed anything that Jesus stood for or presented. So here, disciples of Jesus who went about spreading the gospel created such hatred in him provoked him to the point where he decided to make sure that he banished. Now, on his way to get them arrested and put into prison, he was encountered, there was a lightning from heaven that struck him. He fell off the horse or the chariots, and he heard this voice, and the people around him could hear the voice, but couldn't see anything. And they heard this voice, the Lord calling to him, why are you persecuting me? And when he inquired and he realized it was Jesus, he just said, what do you want me to do? So he realized that he was carrying a wrong vision. Now he has encountered somebody who is giving him a new vision. So what should I do? Vision will make you do things. When you find people who are daydreamers and they tell you they are vision, they lie. Because if you have vision, you work. Vision act. Vision manifest. Vision is created. Vision activates. But when a person is sitting in one place and does nothing, oh, I had this idea. It's an idea. But what did you do with it? I have this great idea. But what are you doing with great ideas? Great ideas is like a mother in a church with a baby. When the baby cries, you leave the sanctuary as quick as you can to comfort the child and bring the child back. That's what vision is. Vision is being in, among people. When the vision calls you, you isolate yourself for a moment to get your right focus and come back to the people knowing that you have something that they can't take away from you. So the Lord confronted him. He fell off the horse. And he was actually in a state for three days without food. And God is revealing to Aeneas. He said, listen, there's a man by name Saul of Tarsus. This man has had a vision. He was praying and he's had a vision. And the vision says that you are coming to help him. Let's go further. Verse 12. And it says, And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Let me tell you something. People are having vision. You may have vision that somebody has to come and put his hand on you so you see things clearly. If you have a vision... You have to have people help you to brighten the vision. So many of us have visions, but we don't have the people to come and help us fulfill the vision. That is why any vision you have cannot be done by yourself. It cannot be done alone. You need people to help you fulfill the vision. As great as the vision, so great will people be. So when you see the result of the vision, remember that you didn't achieve it by yourself but you are doing it with people around you. You have people who are helping you to fulfill that vision. This is what sets you apart, and this is what makes you different. And let's jump further. Verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go, he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children 
of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came, he sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes some things like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Let me say something to you. When Ananias received a vision to go lay hands on him, he was telling God, God, let me tell you about this man. He's a bad man. This is a man who has done, done us harm. Don't you realize he's coming to hurt us? God said, no, 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 no. That's none of a business. I have chosen him. There are people you may not think have a vision that will help you. There are so many people you may not even recognize or people you may have written off because to you, they don't qualify to have the kind of vision to help you. Just do your part. And their vision will help you and will build many lives and strengthen the body of Christ and also bring glory to God. That's what vision does. Vision is not self-serving. Vision helps you and help others too. If you have a vision and it's a vision from God, that vision will help somebody. Here, Ananias was saying to the Lord, God, you know this man? God said, I know him. That means God chooses to give vision to anyone and you can develop that vision irrespective of how good or bad the person is. Vision has nothing to do with your opinion of others. It's got to do with God's plan for their lives and how open they are to God. And if you have a vision from God, Trust me, that vision will always come to pass, no matter what. You need a vision. Your vision will help you to do things. Your vision will take you further. Your vision will strengthen you, and your vision will make you happy. You see, so Ananias went, lay hands on him, and you know what happened. God told him what this man was going to do. So he goes further to say, so when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately he preached the, he preached the Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. And all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem? And has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? Is it not the guy that we didn't expect him to have a vision of such? We expect him to maintain the old vision. Now this man has been affected by a new vision. Now look at what this man is doing. Aren't you surprised? Aren't you surprised? We thought he's here to harm us. But of course, he's not here to harm us. He's here to fulfill the vision and do what the vision mandated. Let me put this point clear. What your vision can do for you. Vision will give you the opportunity to think about alternative futures for your own interest. Vision will give you opportunity to think about alternative futures for your own interest. There are so many things that vision will do for you. Vision will help you to consider your services to entire new people that you didn't think were there. When you have a vision, you do things differently. You don't serve you, you serve people. Vision will help you see things and do things differently. That's why you have to hold on to your vision. Vision will help you to develop new trends. Vision will make you show interest in things you never read before, follow things you never followed before, Ask the questions you never asked before. Study things you never studied before. And also bring you untold joy you never had before. What vision can do for you is what you allow vision to do in your life. 
Do you have a vision? Do you believe in that vision? Then hold on to that vision and do not give up. Because the vision is for at a point of time. Yet, it will materialize. Vision will take you places. Again, you will be able to do things others consider impossible. And you'll be able to sit back and say, now I have reason to give God glory. Because in my own strength, I couldn't do this. But because of the vision that I have today, look at what I'm able to accomplish. Hold on to the vision. Because vision will do great things. Your vision can take you places. And your vision can bring you great joy. As I wrap up today, let me say to you again, vision can do a lot for you. Don't just daydream. Put the vision to work. Now, I have actually taught this series all through the month. Go on YouTube. Go to lifeinternational.us. Listen to Do Life. And actually take your time. Study this message. Make notes. And immediately apply it. I promise you, you would see great results in your life you didn't know was possible. Vision, vision, vision is a mental picture of the future. It's an idea of what you see as possible, even though it's not materialized yet. Vision can cause you to have reason and purpose for existence. Don't let go of that vision. If the vision is of God, Hold on to it. Hold on to the vision. If you don't have one, hang around people who have it. It will rub off on you. It will provoke it in you. Vision is necessary. If you live by vision, you will benefit from vision. Let the vision that God has put in you come alive. I want to thank you for watching. And I pray that the Lord would give you insight, even deeper insight, after this message. We want you to share this message with all of your friends and loved ones on the various platforms. Go to YouTube. Go to Live International. Go to Do Live. Go to our various platforms. And also I encourage you to give, contribute, and support this ministry. God bless you. And take time and watch what I shared earlier, what vision can do. Watch the Global Leadership Center, which is about to be open this year. And again, don't forget to give to Life International. And I'll ask God's greatest and richest blessing upon your life. See you next week. God bless. Hello, my dear family. Today I'm standing right here at the Global Leadership Center. This is the building we've been looking for and waiting patiently for all these years. It's become a reality. And I would like to give you a quick tour so you see where we are and the place where you will be coming to very shortly so that we can celebrate God's goodness and also touch the world with His love and also train people who impact their generation.
Look at the space. Look at where we've come. Look at what has been done. What has been accomplished. This is a good sign that Life International is rising. Global Leadership Center, it's here. Touching the world, it's now close. And we're gonna do a great job. And I hope that your excitement would increase just as my excitement has increased. Look at this and look at God. It's all because of you. It's because of your love for his kingdom, your love for your church, and your love to reach this community and bring global transformation to many people. I am so excited. And it's again because of you, your commitment, and also your love for Life International. Thanks for watching. It is our joy and desire to come to you every time with this uplifting, powerful messages that can help you to achieve your goal and fulfill your destiny in life. Don't forget to watch us and subscribe. At the same time, follow us and share us on your various platforms. Please support us through your giving. And it's through your giving that we are able to reach out to the masses and give the people what we are giving you today. God bless and see you soon.